first guitar for, that Chet Atkins gave to Les Paul? Yeah, this was one of three uh, Chet Atkins prototypes. In fact, on the back of the headstock. See, it's got the, uh, the Gibson prototype stamp back there. And That's uh, they made three of these. And Les put me in touch with Jim Hutchins, who's the guy that, uh, that built these for, for Chet. And uh, this uh, is an amazing instrument. Yeah, he made three. And one of them went to Paul Yandel and uh, the other two went to Chet, and when I was talking to Jim about it, he said you could tell which ones went to Chet because of the uh, Ray Butts pickups. That is correct, yes. And uh, Chet's uh, funky, Bigsby, uh, That's right. funky Bigsby arm. And so yeah. Remember, you saw it here first. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's it. But uh, uh, I, I can't thank you enough for sharing your knowledge and, uh, and your guitars and your time and your patience and all those good things with the foundation and myself and uh, uh, this is truly a, a memorous moment. Uh, I, I can't even put into words how I feel at this given yeah. moment in time. Yeah, less, less. I loved to death. You know, he, he, he was kind of my surrogate grandfather a little <laughs> bit. Uh, we'd have great conversations about all sorts of technology and pickups and guitars and computers and. Uh, well, he was it, a, he was the technology guy. He was, and he just meant the world to me. And this is just something that we can do to kind of make people aware of the foundation and hopefully give a little bit back to the guy that gave so much to all of us. Yes, I, and I'm in agreement with you there. Nobody gave to this business like the immortal Les Paul. And uh, Lex, I can't thank you enough. Thanks, Frankie. Thank you. Yep. Hey, everybody, Frankie V back again with my good friend, Mr. Jim Wasaki. How are you? Jim, I'm terrific, Jim. Uh, you looking well today. Thank you. Uh, Jim uh, has been uh, a close friend of Les Paul's for years and years and uh, uh, has shown a lot of love and kindness for Les and uh, Les did the same for him in return. And uh, I am privileged and honored to have you with me here today. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of the Les Paul Foundation and the Paul family, uh, this is uh, an event come true. And, Absolutely. and, and it, you have so much to do with this and we can't thank you enough. Thank you. Uh, Jim, uh, I, I can't help but notice that, uh, for whatever reason, uh, isn't it true that this was Les Paul's favorite uh, flat top black Les Paul? Yeah, this is a 1958 Les Paul custom that was given to Les by Gibson. Uh, he preferred the flat tops over any guitar that he owned. Uh, the circuitry in here is for, from a recording model, I believe. Um, it was sent to Les and in the early 70s, it was sent back to Gibson, and it was um, refurbished by him. And um, you could see where Les actually had the connection the for the pulverizer, right? That's, that's fabulous. The pulverizer, and uh, it's number eight. It was in his collection. It's number eight out of his collection. I believe there were three guitars like this: two white ones and a black one. And uh, he gave it to me about a year ago, and they said, "Put it under your bed for a rainy day, friend." <laughs> well, you know, it's so nice of you to be able to come out here and share this piece of musical history with us and uh, I find it to be wonderful. The other thing that I find, uh, I don't know if we can zero in on that in a camera, Les preferred his guitars without binding and uh, yeah. there, there's, there, that's absolute right. proof my friends. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to get a shot back here too, uh, sure. Jen. Uh, as we see this is out of Les Paul's personal collection. We have a little tag here and Les's name and of course the inked on serial number, and it, it seemed that Les preferred the Keystone Grover style right. uh, tuners. And uh, this particular guitar, yes, with the uh, with the low impedance electronics, really uh, exuded that Les Paul sound. Yeah, absolutely, he loved the low impedance. He preferred him better. Better, he got better sound. His sound out of low he impedance. He got any sound he wanted. <laughs> he, but, uh, I can't believe I get to hold this, ladies and gentlemen. This is, this is uh, unbelievable. This also has the uh, the Amphenol jack where Les installed his microphone. He was able I to remember that. He yes. was able to sing directly into the guitar, and out of a jack, his voice came out of the amplifier as well as the guitar sound. He changed the toggle switch up here for a volume switch. The toggle switch is now down on the bottom. It was all rewired and redone to his specs. Yes, and from what I understand, Les and uh, Rusty Paul uh, performed all the uh, little modifications self-handedly. They did all the all of the uh, 
most of the changes on it. Gibson did, but it was brought back to Gibson and he redid it to his standards, how he liked the guitar well, to sound. I can understand Les had his own little secrets and right. uh, little to-dos on right. how he wanted to get the sound. And apparently, he knew. He knew. Uh, I was wondering if you can enlighten me on this particular Epiphone. I met Les back in 1981 and in 1982, I received this from Les. It's a, an Epiphone. I don't even know what model it is, but uh, this was another. This was the first one he gave me and said, "Put it under your bed for a rainy day." Um, it was one of the early model Epiphones. He had the two clunkers that he cut up, and he told me he didn't have the heart to cut this guitar up, so he kept it in one piece. And I guess he he said for me to keep it because he said he didn't have the I don't know the patience because he would have ended up cutting it up. So he gave it to me, and it's wow. been on my wall for years. That, that is truly, truly fabulous. And I can't help but notice that you have uh, Les's 53 ES-295 here. Right. And uh, I must admit that this is probably one of the cleanest instruments I've ever seen come out of Les's house. Because, yeah. I mean, he really played everything that sure. he owned. Uh, nothing was uh, squirreled away right. for a rainy day when it came to us. But exactly. If we can zero in, look at that finish. 1953, uh, it's actually older than I am, thank God. <laughs> this is truly amazing. Uh, what can you tell me in regard to this guitar? This is one that, he, he liked the guitar, he liked the sound, he liked the way it looked more than anything. Um, he really preferred the solid bodies, but this, when I, when I received it from him, he emphasized his name on the bottom of the um, trapeze tailpiece. And this was just another one that, you know, put under your bed for a rainy day. Well, this is, this is certainly a, a treat and a surprise because I certainly didn't expect it. <laughs> uh, this is just phenomenal. And I'm sure everyone out there agrees with me, uh, Les Paul truly was the man. And without him, we would not be doing what we do today. Right. Uh, unless we do, we always did and always will love you. Well, Jim, I want to thank you for sharing all these moments and memories and good times with us. Very and uh, I know we're going to get to do this again and again and again. Absolutely. Uh, you would truly become a brother. Anytime. And we love you and we appreciate okay. everything. Thank you. thank you. Hey, Frankie B. back for the Les Paul Foundation. Uh, on hand today, we have Tony Wright. How do you say your last name again? Wyatt. Wyatt, okay. How you uh, doing, Frankie? Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, uh, as part of musical history and uh, our dearly departed friend, Mr. Les Paul. Uh, now, I know you had, a, you had a relationship with Les, and uh, uh, you're one of the ablest guys when it came to Les. And uh, I know you were presented with this guitar right here. Uh, can you give me a little commentary on this? Uh, actually, um, this was this guitar was given to me by my father. Oh, okay. Um, who was also from from Les's time period. He was also in his uh, 90s when he passed. Uh, God bless. But um, my friend Lex Thomas, who you've spoken with recently, uh, my first trip to uh, to see Les at the Iridium Jazz Club, he made me bring this guitar. This guitar is very special to me because of my father. But uh, I broke down and took it anyway. Um, <laughs> I took it back to Les, and uh, I was really excited. Never met Les before, it's the first time. And uh, he introduced himself, I introduced myself, and, and he, I, I felt like he was my surrogate grandfather. He was just an amazing, sweet man. He certainly was. Um, we talked about, not only talked about guitars, but we talked about some of the fundamental changes uh, in the recording industry that were uh, started just by multi-track recording that he was involved with. Uh, we talked about compression uh, and uh, all the things that changed in the industry to make recording possible. And uh, he signed my guitar. And um, As a matter it, of fact, uh, now that you mentioned the signature, let's get a little zero in shot, you and me, with that. We want I think we want to show that off. Isn't that fabulous, everybody? Where, where else are you going to see this stuff? Just a great guy. Fantastic. That, that is fabulous, Tony. Uh, I, I can't thank you enough for uh, uh, being here today. My pleasure. And uh, I know uh, Les loved you, as he loved all of us. And uh, it's nice to actually uh, speak with uh, Les's other friends, other than uh, 
all the other wonderful people we've had the ability to speak to today. Uh, if you have anything to add, we'd, we'd, love, to, uh, we'd love to hear from you on that. Great. Uh, we're going to see you at the next one, absolutely. Yes, sir. Okay, that absolutely. sounds fabulous. Thanks a lot. I'm going to put this down for now. Once again, Frankie B and Tony.